Hello all and welcome back to Blood Hunt Central. I'm Jembu and today we're looking at what's going on since the alpha's concluded, the system spec updates, the pre-alpha stream, the fourth clan confirmed, and VTM turns 30 and more. Please consider hitting the like and subscribe button and following us on Twitter for notifications for future videos. And with that, let's jump right in. system specs changed pre-alpha. As the alpha approached, the system specs for the game were updated on its Steam page. While surrounded by a bit of controversy as some players have stated that the specs were a little high, the game is still in its testing phase, perhaps we'll see a change in the future. At the time of recording, the minimum specs for the CPU is either an i5-8600 or Ryzen 1600X a GT1070 or an RX 5600XP for the graphics card and 16 gigs of RAM. While the recommended specs will set you at a i7-8700K or Ryzen 5 3600X for the CPU and an RTX 2060 Super or RX 6700 XT and again 16 gigs of RAM. Both specs recommend an SSD hard drive with up to 20 gigs worth of space, but you should be able to use a normal standard hard drive as well. I currently run the game on a medium rig with a 1660 Super and the game ran fine. Other than the bugs that I stated that I found out when I was on the Alpha, it's a beautiful game and it does run well. What do you think of the specs? Are they a little high or do you think they're about right? Let us know in the comments below. Shark Mob's first live stream before the Alpha. Shark Mob had its first live stream on July the 1st, the day before the Alpha. Rochelle, the community manager, sat down with members of the Shark Mob team and went through the information about the game as a whole and the Alpha that was upcoming that weekend. It was very much worth a watch as it goes over some of the thought processes behind the game and Shark Mob's relationship with the World of Darkness's brand team, especially with the creation of some of the lore aspects that have been developed for both the RPG and the game itself. It was nice to see the two teams working together to release lore for both medium and also work together to keep the community happy with the content. The fourth clan confirmed on the live stream. During the live stream, Martin Holtberg, who's the community and IP director at Sharp Mob, answered the questions as if there was going to be any other playable clans in Blood Hunt. While initially saying yes, he didn't go into any specifics, however, later on in the stream decided to drop the information that the next playable clan would be the Ventru. The Ventru are a higher class clan running with the same circles as the Toreador, hated by the likes of the Gangrel and Bruja clans. You would usually find the Ventru clan members whining and dining with politicians, company CEOs, nobility and aristocrats. While Martin didn't say what kind of abilities they would have, it's safe to assume that it could be in the realms of dominating over people and somehow affecting their enemies. It's also notable as well that in the game setting, they tend to look down on the lower classes as it could be interesting to see if they work this into the game. What do you think of Ventru being the first cl clan to be added to the game, and who do you think could be next? Alpha or Beta speculations? This is a sore point for many players that played the Alpha, and even more so for the players that missed the Alpha altogether, as there are still people coming into the Discord channels and asking how to get into the Alpha or asking for keys. At the time of recording, there is no current plans announced for any other tests, be it closed alpha or open beta. However, with past articles and videos, Sharp Mob have stated that they would like to get the game released in 2021. If the devs are to keep to this timeline, then we could potentially see another test in the future with maybe more features enabled. To keep up to date with either the alpha or beta tests, please follow the devs on Twitter and, and join the Shark Mob Discord channel for more information as there's always somebody in there that's looking to answer questions and interact with the community. A place in the game for battle passes, customizations and eSport? David Serlin, who's the producer at Sharp Mob, went into details in regarding events saying that as a live service game, there will be events. However, the frequency and number of events are yet to be determined and only the future will tell. A question about eSports was also posed, and while eSports is a possibility, it's not a sole goal of the game, and he stated that if it came from the community from the ground up, then they might have a look into it. It's all well and good that Shark Mob was to implement the system, but if the community doesn't play it, then it would have just been a waste of time and resources. 
If we want uh, them to add the competitive scene, then we need to let them know by our feedback, and also we need to play the game itself. While the alpha had a lot of customization for your vampire, David also covered that there was going to be more customization available at launch, and with the gameplay footage that was playing as they spoke, you could see that there was a battle pass option with store and currency. Now we can all agree that there is going to be paid content for the game at launch, and it has also been confirmed that the game's going to be free to play. I just hope that it will be all cosmetic. If they're releasing more clans and archetypes, do you think they'll be behind an unlock system? And if so, do you think it'll be unlockable by both in-game currency and real life currency? And also, do you think there'll be like free rotation for archetypes uh, if we have to unlock them just to try them out? We've seen that before in games like League of Legends, which I know is a MOBA, however it has a working free to play business model and does well, by either using the in-game currency to unlock characters or just buying them from the store. If there were archetypes behind an unlock system and you had the choice to buy them, would you? I always like to try to buy a couple for free to play games that I play to help the developers out. Also, if I'm really enjoying the game, I'd want to play it more. What are your thoughts on this? Would you buy the battle passes and the skins? And finally, Vampire the Masquerade turns 30. I thought it would be nice to drop this in here as recently Vampire the Masquerade hit its 30th anniversary. Created by Mark Renhagen, being released in 1991 by White Wolf Publishing, it's gone through five editions, with the latest one being released in early 2018. It's had numerous spin-offs, RPG adaptations and video games, and has also been adapted into a vast live-action roleplay or LARP system that's being played throughout the world. We would like to congratulate everyone who's been involved in making Vampire the Masquerade what it is today, and we hope that the next 30 years will bring you the same success and achievements that you've seen previously. Thank you very much for watching the video, and please let us know your thoughts on any of the topics that we covered today in the comments section below. We'd like to invite players that took part in the closed alpha to submit clips of their battles throughout the alpha test. We're looking to create some top montages of plays and kills that have in the closed alpha. If you're interested, the information on how to submit your clips will be in the description of the video. Please make sure you provide all the information as we'd like to credit you in the videos. And again, guys, thank you for watching and we'll see you in Prague.